FM News Talk 97.1 Podcast. Jennifer Griffin from the Fox News Channel is uh, kind enough to give us a few minutes this hour. Jennifer, how are you? Fine, thank you, Mark. We're in Chappaqua right now. In Chappaqua, where Hillary Clinton is, is still resting and recuperating. That's right. We've been here, in fact, since Sunday when she uh, stumbled leaving the 9-11 memorial ceremony. She's going to go back on the campaign trail tomorrow. We'll be on the plane with her when she flies to Greensboro, North Carolina, and then onward to Washington, D.C., where she'll be addressing a gala for the Congressional Hispanic Caucus tomorrow night. So I know she, I mean, she brought out some heavy hitters in her absence. She got the president, the first lady, uh, what, Joe Biden. A lot of people have been out working for her. In fact, her campaign said that she was at home yesterday uh, resting, and she watched the president as he campaigned for her in uh, Philadelphia. Uh, he, she sent her husband, Bill Clinton, out to attend two three or sorry, two high profile fundraisers in Los Angeles. And now he is speaking as we speak in Las Vegas, delivering an education speech that she was supposed to deliver in Las Vegas. Her daughter, Chelsea, is down in North Carolina. Uh, The attention being given to North Carolina in this election is really unprecedented. Both uh, Democrats and Republican candidates are spending a lot of time. And I think it's notable that the first stop that Clinton will make back on the campaign trail after uh, three to four days off uh, to recover from pneumonia is, in fact, North Carolina. Yeah, I saw your report yesterday on on Fox News about CBS editing out Bill Clinton saying that she frequently had dizzy spells over the years. Uh, They're probably, the campaign is probably less than thrilled with that surrogate speaker for her. (laughs) Well, uh, (laughs) You know, he was the communicator in chief when he was president, um, and he certainly still connects with voters, but you never quite know what's going to come out. Um, the CBS, to be fair to CBS, they put out a statement saying that the, they did end up running the complete quote in which Bill Clinton said that she had frequently and then corrected himself, uh, suffered from this kind of dizziness from um, dehydration over the years. Um, they played that in full on CBS this morning and on their website and on another uh, web outlet. Uh, They said they had taken out uh, one second and a half for time in their evening news broadcast, and that's why they claimed that they had edited that soundbite. Yeah, I was in the television news here in St. Louis for about 20 years. I know it's it's not unusual if somebody has corrected themselves in the middle of a statement to clip that out. I I guess I don't blame them for that one. Absolutely, and... (laughs) Uh, well, look, it's a, it's, uh, it's a very, uh, you know, time is tight in these news broadcasts. However, uh, it certainly raised eyebrows at first when uh, people thought at first that Bill Clinton was saying that she frequently experienced this dizziness and these kind of um, blackouts that seem to occur from dehydration is what they're attributing it to. Um, again, a lot of this could be set to rest if the Clinton campaign would release her medical records, but they have not done so. There were reports yesterday that in the next 48 hours we would receive the medical reports from her doctor, Lisa Bardock, from her last two um, uh, meetings with her on Friday and on Sunday when she was diagnosed with pneumonia, but we have not received those records yet. What we have seen in the last uh, last few hours is there was about an hour-long Twitter rant under Hillary Clinton's uh, Twitter handle by her aides uh, attacking Donald Trump's business practices overseas, his connection, his alleged connections to uh, Russian mob bosses. This all stemmed from a Newsweek article that has really gotten a lot of attention in terms of Trump's business practices overseas and how they pose um, a national security threat. In fact, Tim Kaine, her running mate, uh, was is going to be on the radio tomorrow, tomorrow on Sirius FM radio. He is going to be talking about uh, those business practices of Donald Trump. So it's very clear the Clinton campaign wants to change the narrative away from her health, away from her emails, away from uh, away from Colin Powell's emails, which have now been hacked by a Russian, what appears to be a Russian surrogate. Jennifer, I, I I know that you do a lot of investigative work for the Fox News Channel. Are are you have you been part of her press pool coverage? I have. I've been part of her press a uh, part of her press pool coverage. Uh, since uh, May. Um, now, when I say pool coverage, no, we have uh, separately, we have uh, each network uh, rotates as part of the pool. I am part of her traveling press, however. Okay. And so I was on the plane with her all last week. I saw her after she had the coughing fit. I was with her at that time. We asked her what was going on with uh, with the cough. 
Um, she told us it was allergies. We were with her right after the National Security Forum she held on Friday. Uh, at that point, we didn't know she had been diagnosed with pneumonia. In fact, I think very few people knew. She had just conducted a, a full national security meeting with top former national security advisors, and I've spoken to many of them, and they said they had no clue that there was anything wrong with her during that meeting. So she really tried to keep this under wraps. You heard from her the other night. She spoke to CNN's Anderson Cooper and said, uh, called in and said she had just wanted to try to power through it, and she didn't want to miss the 9-11 memorial. Well, I, I don't want to hold you up too much longer, but one final question. How unusual is it in your experience for that eight-hour news blackout after the incident on Sunday morning at the 9-11 uh, memorial? Well, eight-hour news blackout, I wouldn't describe it as such. I would say there was a 90-minute news blackout where the pool did not know where she was, did not know what her condition was, and that we were not getting any information from her campaign. That was 90 minutes. Uh, what we didn't know, uh, and then when we did receive a statement shortly before she left Chelsea's apartment and so we saw her for the first time, we were told that she was overheated and dehydrated, uh, but we weren't told she had pneumonia until 5.15 uh, p.m., um, and that was approximately eight hours later uh, when they released a statement from her doctor and slipped in the middle of that was that she had been diagnosed uh, with pneumonia on Friday. So wow. that's when we finally knew the, the what we think it was the whole picture at that point. But again, they have, and they, the, a day later, the, her campaign spokesman said they regretted how they handled the incident on Sunday. But since Monday and that issue, <laughs> that statement of regret, we still have not gotten any information from them Amazing. about how she's doing and what her condition is. Jennifer Griffin with the Fox News Channel, I would be remiss to not mention that you have a St. Louis connection, correct? Your husband? Absolutely. My husband went to Parkway Central. He's going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame this uh, November, and we're going to be traveling out there. And my in-laws live in St. Louis, and my nephew just uh, is a freshman at Wash U. So oh, that's awesome. Connections. Well, yeah. maybe you can stop by and be on the air with us when you're here. Well, thank you, Mark. I'd love to do that. We would love that. Jennifer Griffin, thanks so much for your time. Okay, bye -bye. All right, take care. We appreciate that. Uh, wow, how about that? A Parkway Central Colt going into their Hall of Fame. That's a big deal. Love watching uh, Jennifer Griffin's reports on the Fox News Channel, and I uh, uh, love having her on here. Get more at 971talk.com.